So for this one, we're going to do everything. We'll do the Lewis structure, and then we'll get the material from the Lewis structure after that. So after we do the Lewis structure, we're going to try to figure out what's the ideal bond angles, what's the uh, geometry, and is it polar? Those are the main questions we'll be asking. Wait, how is it that CL is able to bond with F? Uh, yeah, it's one of those funny ones. You can have mixed halogens. Remember, some of the halogens can have a positive charge. So it's sort of a covalent ionic mixture. So this is going to be minus one oxidation state, and this will be plus three. And uh, in a funny way, halogens will do that. And very com it's, it's a common thing. Uh, a little strange, I understand. But, you know, if you think of, yeah, other nonmetals do this too. Maybe it's not less unusual. So, but yeah, they do. So let's start with the valence. Uh, and I picked a more difficult one. I hope that's okay. Uh, seven for chlorine and three times seven for fluorine. So that's 28. Which one's in the middle? Chlorine. Yeah, it's going to be chlorine. Remember I told you that little trick that it's the first one and then a list of the second and the list goes on the outside. Okay, now let's start putting in bonds. Uh, two, four, six. Now we have our skeleton. Six of 28. Now let's keep going with the terminals. Eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So now I'm at 24 of 28. Where are my next electrons going to go? On the CL. Yeah, it has to go in the center molecule. CL can have an expanded valence shell because it's bigger than neon. It's a larger atomic number than neon. So, we're going to sit right on there. Are those are lone pairs? Those are lone pairs, yeah. All those, are, all those dots represent lone pairs. Uh, it's so like five lobes, right? It has, yeah, yeah, I guess lobes is an okay word. It has like, yeah, five potential lobes coming up. Then there's the two yeah, so here's the, this is the structure. Hey, let's do the uh, formal charge. What's the formal charge on every floor? On what? Every flooring has what formal charge? Neutral. Neutral. Yeah, it's zero. How about the chlorine? Plus. Chlorine is in column seven. Three. Right. No, it should be neutral. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. It should be neutral. It's neutral. It has to be. If the rest are neutral and the overall charge is zero, it has to be zero. Yeah, because it's, it's kind of like you're using the counting the bars as one, and then yeah. you're counting the bars as two. Right. right. So, you have to get, it's different than doing the octet rule. This definitely breaks octet, but chlorine can do that. We have pretty much, if they're all zero, we've pretty much found the best possible case. You can move things around and make some double bonds, and that's fine. It's not going to be better than this, though. Uh, like, if you wanted to make double bonds, you can move like this here. It's just going to get kind of hairy looking. All right. Uh, so that's that part. We got that. Now, we want to figure out this, the shape of this. So to do shape, I need a little scratch paper here. How to figure out the shape. Shape, what's important is, I need to know the number of groups. What are the number of groups? Okay, the following can be a group. And this is what you'll have to remember for this section. A single bond is con considered group. In fact, a double bond is considered one group. And a triple bond is considered one group. And finally, a lone pair is considered one group. So how does that work out? If you go to the chlorine over here, you'll see there's five total groups. Two lone pairs and three single bonds, five total groups. So this has five groups. That's going to influence the shape. 